so now we are finally at the point where we are going to talk about something which is a bit more uh, bit more exotic bit more sophisticated and kind of would take up a lot of our time today which is basically understanding what are the different ways you can change the data right so as of now we have covered two things uh, we have covered one thing actually which is basically how you do the evaluation right changing your evaluation matrix we have already talked about it now we are talking about the second point in the lecture about imbalanced data set which is change the data so right so guys now we are going to be talking about the change the data part of it so change the data is obviously something very easy to understand not much of it so let's try and understand what is change the data part of it right so change the data is basically this concept that you have this class imbalance and then somehow you reduce this imbalance by changing the data right that's all about it right that's what it could have been could it be anything more than that no right so change the data is you have this imbalance and somehow you need to remove it so there can only be two possible options right so one is where the first option is basically you this is a class one and this is a class zero right class one is a lot of less data class zero is here so the first one option is basically you bring both of them down to the same level right so this is a class one this is a class zero and the second option is you basically bring up both of them to the same level right so the class one this is a class zero right so there are two things that in this case you kind of got removed of this part of the data so you said okay just remove this data and this is what is called under sampling technique as you can clearly understand under sampling is basically you're removing a part of the data and making both the classes equal that's about it in the second class you know, what you did was you kind of build this up somehow and brought it to this level right so that is the concept of oversampling right so there's nothing much around here change the data basically comes in two variants under sampling and over sampling under sampling is basically where you're taking the dominant class and reducing it down to the almost the size of the minority class and over sampling is basically the concept where basically taking the minority class and bringing it up to the level of the majority class right simple concepts so now let's try and understand those two concepts more detail it's right, so under sampling as i've already told you this is your minority class the one in red and the one in blue is your majority class and your under sampling techniques basically cover constitute around bringing your majority class down to the level of your minority class right so that's under sampling so there are obviously some under sampling techniques uh, that we are going to be discussing about this right now but the thing to note here is and i would definitely want to kind of before you kind of look at what these links are what these concepts are i'm gonna obviously help you understand all of that but before you do that let's try and take a moment to kind of think of what are the things that you can do yourself right please remember these are those kind of sessions which are basically completely open to your freedom of thought your creativity and the way you think about it right so we are going to be obviously scratching the surface digging up some of the very uh traditional techniques to do under sampling but that's definitely not the entire world about it right under sampling definitely has a lot more to it uh, i would definitely request take a moment think about the ways you can basically reduce uh, you can reduce the data right of the majority class that's what i under sampling is so what are the creative ways you can reduce data so that's something i would definitely like to take a moment for you guys to think i after that i'll basically list down a slide i'll give you the some of the options that you can do so that which is more than this so if you don't understand some of them please go and ask your instructor about that same uh, but for now i would request you guys to please take a minute pause the video if required and think about what are the different ways you can under sample so now guys we are going to be talking i hope you guys put some thoughts and here are some of the uh, techniques that i have listed down for you obviously not all of them are part of the slides so definitely put some effort i would really uh, love you guys put if you can put some effort and kind of clarify your concepts around this uh, these are some of the novel techniques to do under sampling nothing much nothing rocket science about any of them it's just there are very novel techniques some uh, you know which are already there and other students in other batches have come up with so it's a combination of all of that uh, so just probably would be a good idea to kind of go through them sometime but apart from that let's now get started with under sampling right so under sampling comes 
in three major variants. These are the three most traditional techniques. Uh, one is random under sampling. The second one is called cluster centroid. The third is stomach links. Now, random sampling under sampling is obviously something that you obviously very easily guess, right? So if you are, so all your job about under sampling is removing those extra data, right? So you have your majority class that's lot crowded, and you have to somehow reduce that data. So what is the best way to reduce data? Randomly sample, right? That's the best way you can do that, reduce data, right? Just randomly sample from your minority class and just get to a reduced size, right? That, that, that's fairly intuitive. Um, just to kind of make sure that you understand this, all I'm saying is this is your majority class and out of this majority class, randomly pick up samples such that you just pick up samples of size equal to this, right? So whatever this size of minority class is, you basically pick up samples from this entire thing. You just pick up basically, so if there are 10 examples of your majority class, you pick up 10 samples from your major, uh, 10 samples in a minority class, sorry. And then all I'm saying is basically pick up randomly 10 samples from your majority class, right? Such that you basically have all of them equal. And that's exactly what we are going to be talking about here, which is random under sampling. So in this case, to kind of give an example, so you have these observations, which are in two classes, A and B. A is a majority class, it has 975 example, B has 25 class, so proportion of minority class is 2.5%, right? So now out of this, what I'm saying is basically instead of class A has a lot of examples, so no need to include all of them in our training data. What we are going to do is pick up randomly samples from class A and that's it. So when we now pick up randomly samples, so how many samples did we pick up? Um, from A, we selected 475 points and from B, we selected 20. So B, we don't touch, right? We, B is a minority class. In case of undersampling techniques, we are not touching B at all. We are just dealing with A and somehow reducing them, right? So uh, as you can clearly see, in this one question that kind of still probably would be bothering your mind out here is uh, from A, how, why did we select 475 points, right? Ideally, we should be selecting exactly same number of points from as that is there in the minority class. Now the answer to that is uh, it's not necessarily required. You can basically your idea of undersampling is basically reducing the size. Now by how much is a question that is more of for you to answer based on the performance at different levels of undersampling, right? So if you undersample by 50%, if you undersample by 25%, 75%. What happens at all of those levels is something that you cannot predict and neither can I at this point in time. You have to kind of build the model, see how how much undersampling actually works for you. In this case, uh, we basically increased our majority population. So in this case, you can see the minority proportion was 2.5% in this case. And you basically undersampled by 50%. So earlier you had 1000 points. Now in this case, we have combined 500 data points. So that is 50% undersampling and that kind of give this right so but we don't know 50 percent is the right number it could be 60 it could be 70 it could be 72 it's something that you have to kind of check for yourself right so that's the outset so the random under sampling concept is very simple you just have to randomly sample from your negative class sorry from your majority class yeah, so you can clearly understand what this is a minority class has increased in both the classes right so now we are going to try and fit our model as it is first. So the idea is now we are going to try and fit two kinds of classifiers. So we are going to take a classification data set and fit two kinds of classifiers, logistic and decision tree. And first we are going to fit as it is without any pre-processing. Then we are going to try and do all the undersampling techniques and also the oversampling techniques and see how our model kind of performs with each of them, right? How the model, both of the models, how kind of performance varies as we do different kind of pre-processing. So that's the core idea. So let's get started with it. So we are going to load this data set and as this, you can see this data set is nothing but the loan prediction data set. This is something you're already familiar with. So what you're trying to do here is basically predict this particular variable, right? So now with the data set that we are going to use, this is something already all of you are familiar with. So the idea is that this is particularly this variable, right? Loan status is something that you're trying to predict. And loan status comes in binary formats. It's either yes or no, one or zero. So it's a classification problem. This is something you're already familiar with. So there's not much to talk about it. So obviously we are going to talk about two classification algorithm, decision tree and random forest. And then we are basically see how both of those algorithms perform, right? So before we do any pre-processing, let's just test how logistic regression and decision tree perform as it is 
on this imbalance data set. So as you can see, this is a class imbalance problem out here because you have seen class zero, which has got very less frequency, but class one, which has got more frequency, right? So yeah, there's a small thing that we did here, which is basically nothing but switch our class labels for class zero and class one. Now that's an interesting thing that we did here and it would be probably be worth kind of understanding why we did there. So what we are saying is basically that the very fact that class imbalance should be basically in class one as compared to class zero, right? Please understand this. This is the class imbalance for class zero and class one. And here the imbalance, the minority class was class zero. Whereas in this case, in this case, basically the class imbalance is in class one, the minority class is class one, right? So what we did was basically switch labels so that we, what we are trying to imply is that if there's a class imbalance, the minority class should be class one. Now, why should that be? Uh, the understanding behind that is this, that all of your precision recall metrics, right? They're all concerned about picking up the positive class, right? Recall is basically of the positives, how many do you pick up correctly? Uh, precision is of the ones that you predicted positive, how many do you pick up correctly, right? So all of them are basically concerned about the class one as compared to class zero, right? So all your evaluation metrics are more biased towards class one. You don't have the corresponding, you can obviously compute it if you want to. But the idea is that all of your evaluation metrics are biased towards positive class. So that is the exact reason why you want to, want to kind of switch your labels so that your minority class is class one, right? So that if you, if you are using the normal SKLearn based APIs, it would be much easier to have your minority class as class one, right? So that you can directly use precision recall as it is. So that's the sole reason why we kind of switch levels because the generally used metrics in available libraries are the ones that use, that are using positive as the, that are biased towards positive, right? So that's why we are uh, using the switching of levels. So now that we understand that, let's, as I explained, let's try and kind of train our random forest and logistic regression on this data set and see how it goes. So we do the normal splitting of the training data and this is all fine. And now we fit our random forest and our random forest gives us an AUC of 0.76. So this is, so now we are gonna basically compare. So this is, apart from the performance, we are just, this is a very interesting thing that is gonna come up for you. So this is your ran random forest. So this has a AUC of 0.76. And uh, this is your logistic regression, which is an AUC of 0.76 again, right? So on this data, as you can, so on this data, this is not a, by the way, this is not a big class imbalance data, right? The class imbalance is hardly 70, 30 kind of a split. You see this, right? So, so this is the imbalance. This is not the kind of imbalance that you would probably tend to see. Uh, this kind of imbalance is not something that you would tend to see in a real life industrial or academic kind of problems that you would tend to solve out. Uh, this is a very clean and very nice data set. The data sets actually tend to be a lot more imbalanced than this. So here you have 400 examples of positive class. Uh, sorry, not here. You have 400 examples of the negative class, sorry. So in this case, you have 400 examples of the negative class and around 150-ish, 200-ish examples of uh, positive class. So that is roughly 66, 33 kind of a split, right? So which is, which is actually a very decent kind of class imbalance. This is not much of a class imbalance. So let's see how, so if we have a 66, 33 kind of split where we have 400 negative examples and 200 is positive examples. And given that is the kind of data set, we trained our random forest and we trained our logistic regression. And this is the performance that we see for both of them. Random forest as well as logistic regression is at 0.6. Uh, there's not much of a difference at this point in time. So let's kind of jump ahead and see what happens when we do under sampling with imbalance. Oh, so we probably do not know about this library. So this is the new library that we are going to use for this particular uh, lecture session that we are doing here. Uh, just to kind of note this, this is a library and you can do everything that is being done here using python pandas coding simple not much of a trouble out there but even if you're someone who's comfortable with using the library it's not a big deal uh, you can definitely go ahead and use this so this is a random under sampling that i've been mentioning so random under sampling is what we have already talked about you're just gonna take samples randomly from the negative minority class right once you do that you can see the class imbalance has completely vanished here 
now both the classes have 140 examples each of them roughly 140 examples right so you had a 400 200 kind of a imbalance and now you have brought both of them down to 140 examples each right so given that is a scenario now let's again try and train our random forest as well as our logistic regression so in random forest we get an AUC which is 0.68 and logistic we get an AUC which is 0.75 so now you can see clearly a drop in AUC a very strong drop in AUC here right so I would definitely request again before I kind of split out the answer for you it would be really awesome if you can think about the answer at your end that why this sudden jump here right so it was 0.76 here and 0.66 out here so why did this jump happen in the first place uh, the reason behind the jump is that that uh, in this case under sampling case you are basically giving the data a lot lesser giving the algorithm a lot lesser data to learn from right in case earlier case it had 600 data points now you have reduced it down to 140 each so which is 280 data points roughly 280 300 so that is a 50 percent under sampling right so 50 percent of your data is lost so now your data now your models are basically trying to learn from a very small data and if you remember decision trees and random forest specifically were very prone to overfitting right so that was one major problem with uh, random forest and as you can clearly see if you have given it a more smaller data to learn from it has obviously overfitted on that small data right so it was easy for it to overfit on a small data so that's why you can clearly see a sharp drop in uh, you see on the evaluation set so on this logistic regression on the other hand is something which is fairly robust to overfitting at least uh, as compared to decision tree and that's where you see that there's not much of a jump here much of a drop in so it, though it has dropped right you can clearly see the drop there's a slight drop out here uh, which may or may not be because of which as of now seems to be because of the under sampling thing it's got a less data to learn from but definitely the drop here is much more sharp and you can clearly understand why it has happened right log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates